people. Welcome back to another episode of the Stay Reading Podcast. I'm joined by my co-host, the man himself, Sugar. How you doing? Listen, man, just like AJ, the adrenaline dump has come down. I'm going to give a more leveled response to Saturday night's action. But you, you just, you know, the instant reaction, you just caught me at a time where I was just like, I thought, I foreseen the... You know, the critic's going to come out for AJ and it's not to excuse his behaviour, but more for the people that's more... There's a lot of underlying stuff in how people are talking about AJ now, but a lot a lot of these so-called critics didn't like him in the first place and were just waiting for an opportunity to bury him. So I felt like, let me get in front of that before they start showing their real selves right now. But we'll be more level this time, well, but <laughs> let's, let's keep going. Listen, I, I, I kind of do appreciate instant reactions at times as well, but... Like you said, we're here to talk about what happened over the weekend. Better late than never. We saw Usyk defend his titles in Saudi Arabia against AJ. And I guess the first thing I want to go to before we actually break down the fight is the decision itself. Being a split decision, were you surprised by that with how the fight unfolded or not? As amazing as this year has been for boxing, I feel like this is going to go down as a year in history of like this in terms of the undisputed bouts and how many great fights happened this year. Boxing is still boxing. So you're always going to have that one dodgy judge that's on the side of the cash cow because obviously, listen, man, even with defeat, you can't deny that AJ is still the big guy for the occasions. And I feel like that was just more of a way to make him look. I think he probably knew that the other judges had Usyk up. So he probably like, let's look AJ make a look, look, uh, make AJ look a bit better by, you know, Saying yeah, he won a few rounds. Even though, to be fair, going into the tenth round, you could have scored it either way. And then Usyk just done something you don't really see in heavyweight boxing too much. Is that he turned up a gear in the tenth round, which was just crazy to see. It's interesting you say that because just on screen right now, we're bringing up this actual stats, uh, and if you actually look at the breakdown there, you see how. From 10, 11, 12, the productivity just went up another notch for Usyk compared to Joshua and also the accuracy. Yeah. So I always say this as well. I know people say about leaving it in the hands of the judges, but even if you do, if you have the later rounds in a close fight where you look more dominant, I guess that will automatically sway somebody just from the eye test itself, regardless of how they come across. Did well, you don't, don't tell Jack, Jack Carter all that, but yeah. <laughs> but did you see, I guess, like you said, 10, 11, 12, were they kind of the turning points in the fight? Because I feel like in the first fight, 10, 11, 12, again, Usyk came strong. Yeah. And it happened again. Was that the turning points, I guess you could say, in the fight? I think it was the turning point because momentum was in AJ's favour, after the 8th and 9th. 8th and 9th is like AJ finally looked like he got his rhythm and then started, you know, sticking on Usyk. And then 10th round, you're looking at it like, oh my gosh, AJ might do this. And Usyk just came out guns blazing. Just that again, touched up. And I was just like, I remember watching the fight thinking, wow, like this guy is just, he's just special. He's the, he's arguably the best pound for pound boxer in the world right now. Because for him to, how he became undisputed at Cruiserweight is a marvel in itself to just become in the undisputed. And what he's been doing at heavyweight boxing cannot be underestimated. And skill for skill, you can put him up there with the top guys, whether it's the Bud Crawfords, Canelo's, they're all Spencers of the world. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. And I just feel like Usyk really put a stamp on it from the 10th. And I was just like, do you know what? There's only one fight to make from here. We know it is. And... I'm just not going to entertain the foolishness that comes on the other side until that fight is done. I mean, we are going to talk about it just a little bit, but yeah. just in the fight itself, I think one of the common things that we were talking about in our group chat as well was the body shots and AJ yeah. leaning towards the body shots. Did he go away from that a bit too much for your personal liking or did it become a little bit predictable where you had to then mix it up? I think it's a bit of both. I think sometimes he did go away from it and he started headhunting. And I remember saying to myself, I don't like how he's headhunting because he was having a lot of good, um, he was having a lot of, you know, good success with the body shots. But I guess, like you said, sometimes it's like, if you do become that predictable, then Usyk's too smart of a fighter to just let you body shot him. 
So it was a mixture. I didn't like some of the advice coming from AJ's corner as well. It did come across once again like it's not in sync. Like, obviously, shout Leon Edwards, you know, first Jamaican born UK fighter to get a belt in the UFC. But you can tell like a lot of people's reaction later that night when they saw Leon's corner and how they were with him in comparison to, to Anthony Joshua's corner. And like a lot of tight rounds, they're just like, yeah, AJ is yours. And I think sometimes it's okay just to tell your fighter it could go your way, but it's not the same way we saw with Leon Edwards, where his well, his corner was a straight saying, you better go out there and grab it out of the fire. And I feel like, yeah, there's, there's a lot of confliction in the Joshua camp still, despite, you know, them doing the whole change in the coaching staff. And I feel like with him... He's still an excellent fighter. Like, whether it's talk sport, whatever radio station of people that don't like AJ, and I just, all these disgusting people that don't like him, but you're still using his name to get, you know, big views and whatnot. All those disgusting people, Simon Jordan's of the world, and is it Jamie O'Hara, who's just sounding like he yeah. didn't watch the match? <laughs> it's scary because some people that have a platform, I don't want to be effing. Like, I don't care, man. I know some people are like, oh, you shouldn't gatekeep. You should let the you know, the casual fans have a say. I'm all for that, but to a certain extent and to in certain positions where a platform like Talk Sport, where it's just like you reach the masses and some of the propaganda that they put out on AJ, like the way they just call him, Maya, he's not that good and this down the third. And it's just like this, he's literally going up against the best top three, arguably the best fighter in the world. And you're saying, what, he's a letdown because that guy beat him. That's like going, I think, um, I forgot who, I forgot who, who said it on Twitter. I saw a tweet where someone said, this is the equivalent of go it, Liverpool going to the Champions League final, getting beaten by Real Madrid, and then saying, ah, oh, Liverpool's rubbish. They got to the final. They're an excellent team. They're just not Real Madrid, but they're still an excellent team. And... I'm like, this is the same mentality that ruined boxing because you guys are doing this whole, oh, if you lose, you're the worst person in the world. I'm like, what? And then here's the ironic thing because these same fans, casual fans, will then say, ah, oh, boxing's dead. Everyone cares about their own. Oh, no one wants to fight. You keep on creating the fuck. Oh, pardon my language. I'm going into rant yeah, mode again. It's but off. You, got, you got these people keep on creating this culture of like, just dragging fires all the way down after a loss especially after a spirited loss. It wasn't even like he got washed out there and he just got banged. It's like, no, like you can acknowledge Usyk's win without having to put AJ all the way down. But like I said, there's a whole bunch of people that have just been waiting on his downfall because they're a bunch of miserable gits. And guess what? He still got paid. He's still going to do well in his life. Get paid more. Listen, <laughs> listen. Look, he's, still, he's still big fish in the pond. Look at all those heavyweights before this fight even happened. All these heavyweights start announcing their fights on AJ's fight week, and you try to downplay what this man's done for British boxing, let alone heavyweight boxing. you got people that's like Team Fury, and listen, man, if you support Fury, there's no, nothing against you too much, but it's like, this is a guy that when he fought Kitschko, only hardcore's tuned into that fight, no one cared at the time. It's half the reason why Fury was so upset at the time, because no one really cared about heavyweight boxing like that. AJ brought the big time back into boxing, especially in the UK, whether these people want to admit or not. So all this jumping on him loud like he's done something bad to boxing, sharp man. I mean, Sorry. Go on. no, no, that's fine. I mean, it's rant two point two, but in a more yeah, but I'm, 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 I'm getting heated again. Uh, but go on. I do want to talk about Usyk though. You said yeah. obviously how he's he, when he became undisputed at cruiserweight, came up mm. heavy enough. His transition to heavyweight boxing, looking at his size and everything like that as well. How has he been able to do this? Like, what type of skills get, does he possess to be able to be make this transition so smooth? Is it the fact that he actually goes in and fights smaller and the lighter fighter on his feet compared to other heavyweights who are naturally built at heavyweight, if that makes sense? Yeah, I think what happens sometimes is that every fighter is different. And some fighters, they feel the need to pack on a lot of muscle. And then once you pack on muscle, that's when you also have a deficit in other areas, whereas Usyk, Naturally, you know, quite heavy guy, not the heaviest, but I think he knows himself well enough to be like, I just need to fight at my natural weight. Certain people, 
they are comfortable about fighting at their natural weight and that allows them to not alter their body mass too much and when you know your body when you've been fighting for that long and you know your body well you know how to reach the optimum point at the right time for the fight to peak for the fight and i think Usyk has hit that sweet spot because funnily enough who did he face before aj was it um chisora chisora yeah yeah and i feel in that fight people didn't think he looked that impressive mm. and it was a case of he's probably just still like you know feeling going through the feeling out process of heavyweight and when he faced aj the first time i think he just realized this is my peak I've, i'm used to heavyweight now i don't need to be scared of certain things and he went out and showed out and listen man credit to Usyk because what a performance by him especially what he's going through right now in regards to his country and having a level head to still go out there perform and the fact that after his fight he just said listen rather than make this undisputed fight or i'm done and unlike that other guy that other dossa Usyk actually means it the same way Usyk said i'm going to get my country to watch this match for free he actually does it Let, let's so. just talk about that i know we were going to speak about the post reaction from aj but i feel like because you we'll, we'll go to that next, but let's let's go. We're let's, already speaking about other dossier. Uh, Usyk and Tyson Fury. That seems like the mega fight to happen happen now in heavyweight. I know yeah. we talk about more roads leads to Joshua and stuff. However, I feel like this now just makes sense to happen. Yeah. In terms of what we've seen, I've heard Frank Warren say it's not going to happen in the UK. The money is not there. So initially, that brings me to. The first point to say, money is going to be a huge thing already in this. That I, I yeah, feel like it's um, going to be a problem. In terms of making this fight, how difficult do you think it's going to be? It doesn't have to be difficult. Let's listen. At the end of the day, Frank Warren slash Top Rank are working together on this. Now, before you know, obviously they got both of them have an issue with Eddie Hearn, but you're not dealing with Eddie Hearn no more. You're dealing with Usyk promoters. Uzi has shown that when it comes to the money side of things, obviously I'm sure that they're battling to get him as much money as possible, but he's not been shown to be the greedy side of things. So it's not been shown to be like, oh, you know, give me this demand and that demand. And from if we can take their word for their word, Frank Warren has also said, come out and said, it's going to be 50-50. So if yes. that is the case... For me, I feel like Usyk has done all the right things to put the ball in Tyson Fury's court and say, generate as much money as you can. It's still going to be 50-50. Let's make this fight happen. And, you know, Tyson Fury's already said, oh, this fight ain't going to generate this much because he's the foreigner, this, that, and the third. If you're the best and you're a fighting man, show us you're a fighting man. Because all the stuff that you claim to be, Usyk seems to be. So at this point, put your money where your mouth is and make this fight. I'm going to ask you, not a prediction, because we'll wait until mm -hmm. everything gets confirmed. How yeah. confident are you that this fight will happen? If it was to happen, what's if it was up to If it was up to Fury, it's not happening. If it was up to Frank Warren and, and Top Rank, it will happen. Because from just the, like I said, I can only go off the public communication. Even Frank Warren and um, Bob Arum especially seem to be like, they seem to be tiring with fury's antics as well i think you can kind of tell sometimes where they're kind of even on like yo fury like shut up like <laughs> it's true and these are people these are his promoters because even when like when he pronounced when he announced his fake retirement which i kept on telling you guys is fake even bob Aaron was just like listen man he's just bob Aaron was kind of like i don't even care no more i'm too old for this man. Just... yeah bob Aaron was like i'm too old for this man the fight's gonna happen for undisputed they want it so now it's a matter of fury. That's it, it's almost like he was known as a guy that used to play mind games before, but you've just become a caricature of yourself. Of like you're forcing it. You know when someone I always say the difference between trying to be smart and being smart. Mm. And right now fury just keeps on appearing like the guy that's trying to be smart. Like I don't know if he's doing this to drum up more attention. And now you're he's at a point where a lot of his own fans are even like, "Yo, shut up." just fight or retire like I'm tired and I just feel like listen man I, I let the professionals do what they need to do to drum up the attention that they need but I don't think Fury is helping himself by doing his old school taxes of saying he's going to retire and then going back on his word and the trolling before used to get attention and now I think he's starting to annoy his own fans you know what? one thing you did say that I, I kind of I do agree with is that 
I feel like the Fury stuff is getting a bit boring. I like it when it's a face. I was face. saying this years ago. I'm happy I with was saying happy this years ago. So when when he's talking to somebody, if there's a face to face and the way he speaks, I don't mind it. But these Instagram posts and stuff, they they are getting a little. I bit don't give it. No, the only time, the only reason I know about a lot of this stuff is because you lot show me in the group chat, and I'm just like, I give the same thing all the time. <laughs> I don't care. I don't believe nothing that guy says until he's actually in the ring. Okay. And even then, I won't believe until the bell rings. Now, one thing I we do have then have to speak well because you said as well is, I guess you could say the mic drop or mic pick up, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> and I have to be honest. Mm -hmm. For me, I hear what people were saying about AJ showing emotion. He's letting it mm -hmm. out, etc. But. I thought it went on a bit too long and I feel mm -hmm. like Eddie Hearn kind of needed to step in a bit just to save himself a little bit from where... You see, no, no, no. At that moment, I don't think it was on Eddie to do that. I think it was on his team. And mm -hmm. the only person who I saw really stop him doing certain things at the time was Chisora. And then I think his head of screen and his boy slash, I think his name is Benga. And those were the only people that I could see that were really, when AJ was, you know, it was emotional at the time. And you, at those moments like that, you do need the right people to just, like, hold you to the side and be like, hey, like, sort it out. Those are only two people. Then the other lot, whether it's a case of their enablers, or sometimes people also need to consider this as well. AJ is a big boy. Who's going to tell him what to do? True. <laughs> like, that's another thing. <laughs> like, people are like, rah, they, so-and-so should have done this. This is one of the best heavyweights in the world, it's hard to tell that guy, yo, relax. And I feel like, obviously, you saw the more level-headed response from AJ in the post-fight press conference, which was very humbling to watch. And I feel in that moment that it, I can't excuse what he'd done. There's no excuse in what he'd done, but it's just a moment of, like, this guy has, you know, shouldered so much pressure from the UK public and just people disrespecting him even when he was doing good for the UK scene and you can tell when that like, even like that speech was so muddled up muddled up with different yeah. things it's like how can you not tell that this is stuff that this guy's been holding on for the years no one brought up his weight and he brought up the phone oh people say you don't you don't fight like this guy and that guy yeah because I'm fucking 18 stone yeah I know. Like, I just... That comment, you can tell that like, that's not something that was even brought up in the at any time. He's just you can tell he's probably in. been waiting to say that since. That's probably a comment from uh, or a narrative from six years ago that he's been waiting to tell people, man, go fight yourself. Like this is the reason why this down a third. And I, even like him mentioning about the whole way he came from of like, and this is why I hate what some people do. But you know how people just dig in for stupid things when people are just like, oh, don't compare yourself with getting in trouble to Usyk being in the war. He never once compared <laughs> himself to what Usyk's going through. He specifically spoke about himself. Like the people that just want to find narratives and agendas against AJ. Ah, f it, man. I'm not holding my tongue. A lot of you are pussy old, man. I'm done with it. Like, no, because I, I try to be, I try to be, I try to be formal about it. But some of you are dickheads. Honestly, a lot of you are miserable in your lives and it's showing right now. Because how you can hate on a guy that's bought big? One thing I liked about Eddie Hearn during that press conference when. Um, uh, I believe AJ was asked a question and then he needed the moment to himself because he was emotional about, you know, failing at this hurdle. Yeah. And there's one, one, one thing, people, there's nothing bad about failing in life because sometimes when you chase greatness, you're going to fail. And that's there's more pride in that than never trying to attempt anything in your life because you're scared. One thing I liked, when Eddie Hearn, off the top of his head, started railing off all the accomplishment that AJ had. And I liked the fact that even AJ tried to stop uh, Hearn, because I think Hearn was just like, he alluded to the fact that a lot of these other heavyweights, you've padded your record. And I think AJ was like, nah, allow speaking about it like that. And I think Eddie was just like, no, it's the truth. you done this, that, the third. And then I'm, I remember he was naming the opponent and naming the venue. And then when Eddie Hearn went off the top of his head speaking on those things, you could, all you could be there is just like, wow, what a resume. What a resume that like, this guy has done. He has made stadium fights normal. And I don't think people can fathom the fact that stadium fights are not normal. It's not. But he was so great in what he'd done, they became normal. And I think what happens sometimes is when someone gets so much success, 
people do not like it. And for a guy that literally had a public persona of just wanting to stay calm, and I'm not trying to be funny. There's loads of you. There's there's loads of athletes that's fallen off the wall way before AJ, you know, had this rant. There's a lot of athletes, your favorite athletes, that you know they had a the tiniest bit of the same success that AJ had, and they went on off the rails. So the fact that this guy's held up until this point, once again, it does not justify what he done at that moment. Because at that moment, he should have let Usyk speak first. And mm. if you had this rant after this, then fair enough. But all these people that are acting like they're better than him, go F yourselves So for a straw. This brings bring me to the next point. We kind of know where Usyk should be heading. Yeah. Joshua now, there's fights in the UK because there's always going to be heavyweight fights in the UK. Yeah. You've got one, one or two in America that mm-hmm. I think stand out for me. If you're Eddie Hearn, you've signed a, you've signed a deal with the Zord, mm-hmm. got the money coming in. How are you plotting AJ's career for the next fight, the next couple of fights? Are we looking just back to arenas for a while before we can push on for a stadium? Because for me personally, I'll say the mm-hmm. only fight I look at as a stadium blockbuster seller would be Deontay Wilder. The guy that's going to run away. I don't know. Wilder, Wilder, Wilder will find a way not to take this fight and still try to wish on AJ. The only one right now, I feel like for now, AJ might need to do the arenas again. Yeah, team. but even that, I don't even think that's a bad thing. No, no, no. I, I, honestly, I think Eddie was saying he wants to get AJ out there more. AJ said he wants to come out like last quarter, you know, December time. And I feel like a welcome home fight in an arena at O2 maybe will be good against who. I'm not too sure. A lot of people spoke about Zhang, who lost a very contentious fight in the co-main. That's what Chizora pulled straight away. Yeah, Chizora. Yeah, I I think that's that's a good fight either way. Chizora and Zhang or Zhang and AJ. But listen, as much as people want to step on AJ's name, a lot of these other heavyweights that aren't titleists are going to be calling out AJ's name, whether it's Joe Joyce, the winner of Joe Joyce versus Joseph Parker, whether it is... No, Wilder's not going to be calling out AJ. Wilder's going to be using AJ's name for class. He usually yeah. does like a bad B. And then who else is there? There's a few other names that are out there. Off to my head, I can't remember. Potentially but I heard, potentially I heard was- like Dubois yeah. and Dillian White are going to face off against each other. And I feel like if Dillian faces off against Dubois, they'll make, you know, AJ first, White two can still be a big, a big one. Do you and think- I even think, do you know what? If we're talking about stadiums, it might not be Wembley unless it's wild up, but I still think AJ might go back to Tottenham Stadium and do mm. that Dillian White fight. And AJ's also got an option. He's always said he wanted to do a big fight in Nigeria. That fight's there as well. And he could, I don't know, depending on what Joe Joyce, if Joe Joyce wants to title all the money, Joe Joyce might just say, do you know what? They're both of Nigerian heritage. Let's go to Niger and do that fight. I know AJ's always wanted that big fight in Niger, so let's get on. I, I'll say this, just this can only come from me personally. It's just that like I look at it from Pakistan. I don't know commercially how well it would do. It may not necessarily do it, or it will still do well, but I just, it'd be a bit more tricky for me just to, I guess, grasp the understanding of what that type of fight would mean in Nigeria. But it may, it may mean big things. I guess I want to say this in terms of, I guess, AJ, then before we do wrap mm-hmm. up this particular bit. Is there a worry that you may not see him win the belt again or do you see him being world champion for the third time again? Even if he doesn't. So th- this is what I mean, but when you're, when you're a guy like AJ, your brand is big enough because he's polarising now, especially with what he's done. Mm. We can't glorify what he's done, but that's even going to have more eyes on him because you're going to have more dickheads that want to humble him. You're going to have more dickheads that's going to tune in being like they want to see him get humbled and such. And like even going back to the Nige fight, I think commercially it can do well because what people forget as well, it's the same time zone. Mm. It well, it's similar time zone. So they can still do that fight and people are gonna act like, oh, we don't care. Your people are gonna tune in. Oh, well, don't no. ever get don't ever get twisted. People, wherever that fight happens, people will tune in. And I feel like with AJ belt wise, it depends how long it takes for undisputed to happen. Because I think after und- und- uh tongue twister after the undisputed fight i feel like whatever happens both of those guys are going to retire and then the belts will scatter like it's dragon ball z and then through that 
AJ might just, I don't think, he, I, I'm not sure if he'll go for Undisputed anymore, but I do think he might, you know, fight for one or two belts just to say, you know, three-time world champion. And then for me, I would like him to call it a day. Retire from boxing before boxing retires you. And we already know, resource-wise, AJ has become very wealthy for this sport and I'm very glad to see it. And for me, I'd like to see him keep his health in check. But for now, just focus on, you know, let's have time to yourself to just yeah. kick back, <clears throat> enjoy your spoils, come back in December if you really want it, but don't come back if you're not 100%. And just go out there and have, for me, I want like maximum three or four more fights, max. Yeah. I don't want him to go over that. There's no need for you to face like, next generation fighters and everything it's not to say that i'm scared that he'll lose but it's more like this is a hard like boxing is a hard lifestyle to keep up with it's very hard on the body and i just feel like he's coming at the end so go i want him to go out gracefully so moving on from aj and Usi, just quickly based on some of the news that we heard earlier so junior the rematch is on in Australia again. Um, I want to get your views just quickly on this. Um, before it was a stadium fight, looks like an arena now. Thankfully. Are you surprised at that? Because I'm personally not. I expected if there was ever going to be a rematch that it would go to arena. But two, is this fight really needed considering how one-sided the last fight was? It's not really needed, but it's in the contract. And, you know, shout out George Cambosis lawyer because he's going to set, hopefully he sets himself for life with this type of, like, match because I feel like what it is is, obviously, he's in a contract. It was a... Um, it was a free fight. Yeah, it was a free fight. Those obviously top rank said there's a rematch. And I feel like at this point, is a case of just go in there, Beat Cambosis again. Cambosis will go off into the. I don't know what he's gonna do. You said to be fair, he. I won't blame him. Like the type of career that he's had. Obviously, mm. he came up against like a big money fight in. Um, Lopez. What's his name? Who did he beat? Tiafimo Lopez. He probably weren't expecting that. And then now he's at the point where, you know, you got a big payday and everything. So yeah, why not? Just I guess, quick predictions on it. Do you see Haney going out and doing what he needs to do? Or on that, do you expect Haney to assert more dominance and get get a stoppage on that? I know you're excited for it. Apologies on mute. I think it's just going to be another shout out victory. I can't see it go any other way. Like Haney's just that much better. And then I think after this, got one more fight on the top rank. And they're aiming to make that Lomachenko first yeah. Haney. And I know Haney's looking to go up to 140, so I think he just wants to, you know, wrap up this contract and move up and get those belts to 140. And with that, we're going to also wrap up today's episode of the Stay Waiting Podcast. As always, we appreciate you for coming on. September's a busy month. October's slowly building up to a busy month. And hopefully in November, we get the fact that I really want. We will speak on that when it occurs. But as always, guys, if you're enjoying the content, you know what to do. Drop a like, share, subscribe. And as always, love and peace.